Welcome to our tutorial about floating point math. We'll begin by interrogating this simple form. Here we've got three text boxes text box X, text box Y, and text box Z. We also have a button compute. Let's take a look at the code behind this form. First, we've got three variables here, each defined as integers. Next is variable x, assigned to the text properties value of text box x. Variable y equals the value of the text property value in text box y. On the next line, the value of variable x is multiplied by the value of variable y. This is assigned to variable z. The last line assigns the value of variable z to the text property value of variable z. Let's see how this works. We're going to run our program. Okay, we'll enter 2 here and 3 here. Now click Compute. Our result appears as it should 6. Everything seems fine. But let's see how this works if we enter fractional numbers here. Click Compute. Now as a result, we see an integer value. The reason for this is that the variable can accept only an integer value. For this reason, the result was rounded to the closest integer value, and the fractional part of this number was lost. Hence, this wouldn't be a very accurate way to multiply fractional numbers. We're going to change our code a little. We'll, we'll declare our variables as doubles by replacing the percent sign suffix with the pound sign suffix. Now let's run our program again. We'll enter a fractional number in both text boxes. Click Compute, and now our result is more accurate because it shows the fractional part of the number. I'm going to use this example to segue into the concept of floating point numbers. You notate floating point numbers as a value between 1 and 10 expressed as a given power of 10. Let's take a look at the numbers I have listed here. For example, 100,001 is notated here as 1.0001 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. Let's take a look at my second number. 0 0.0010001 is written as 1.0001 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3. In other words, the decimal point floats to the position after the first digit in both of these cases. As a result, both large and small numbers can be represented with the same high degree of precision. Let's give some additional perspective here. The double precision floating point number can hold a value of between minus 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 308 all the way to 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 308. If we measure the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is 152 million kilometers, we can get a degree of accuracy with this method in the neighborhood of 10 microns, or one hundredth of a millimeter. My point is this, you should avoid using double precision numbers unless you require more accuracy than the single precision type allows. The single precision type can represent any value from minus 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38 all the way up to 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38. In other words, if we measured the same distance between the Earth and the Sun, we'd get an accuracy to the degree of approximately 200 meters, not quite as accurate as the double precision system at one hundredth of a millimeter, but still very accurate. Here we've got some examples of declaring variables as single or double. And this concludes our tutorial about floating point math.